Bismillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah my beautiful people assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah in a previous pep talk i spoke about the category of people that build a bubble called the past and they they jump into that bubble and keep moving in it throughout the present and throughout the future just like their past was bleak so is today and so will tomorrow and i said that the past does not exist and it's true this is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the opportunity to repent to him what we miss to understand is when we repent to allah we erase the past just know your parents have told you something evil they've done they told you you are good at nothing yeah they said it maybe you angry at them maybe you didn't perform in the great form that they knew you could maybe 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 and there are 1000 maybe is there but when they said it they didn't just abuse you for no reason yes they said the wrong thing but you've got no right to keep dragging that and making it a law i am good for nothing until from now until the end of your life today i will speak about another something that causes people a great deal of deception great deal of loss and great deal of blurriness in the purpose for which they are here and i am not on here about worshiping allah because a lot of people think worshiping allah is doing salat and fasting and that's it actually not being on earth and using the earth for what it is as a means to an end and doing the very best of you that is an act of great ibadah great worship look at this beautiful hadith reported in the tirmidhi and this is an authentic hadith where rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in the translation of the meaning of the hadith man bata whoever spends the night goes to sleep eating i he had dinner because of what his hands have performed i in the job that he did during the day allah will forgive his sins for the whole uh, the past ghafir lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi meaning when you go to work and you don't trade this dunya for the akhirah i e you don't abandon salat you don't do anything haram throughout your day and your job is halal 100% when you get your daily wages or your monthly wages and you eat from them allah forgives you so actually working in this dunya in a very halal way is a source of forgiveness subhanallah so what did we go wrong here is where a lot of people go wrong is by naming things with the wrong names yeah naming things with the wrong names what does that mean In a hadith in Sahihain this is in Al-Bukhari and Muslim and many other hadith subhanallah Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he spoke about the people that in the future la yashribanna unas min ummati al-khamr people from my ummah will drink wine yusammunaha bi ghayri asma'iha they will name it with other names than its name alcohol and as i said this hadith is authentic so there you are today people today don't drink the drink except by different names vodka bicardi whiskey and i don't know what other names but hey uh pinot grigio or uh, but anyway you get the, the idea i'm ha- i'm going to have a bottle of uh, myota all right what is that well actually what they are saying is i am going to get a bottle of alcohol to mess up with my brain to cause my body disease to put me out of my reality or to deceive somebody or to tempt somebody into doing something they don't want to do a club why is it called a club it's not actually a club what it is is it's a place where music is extremely loud alcohol is consumed to uh, at a very scary level girls dressed to the minimum and boys there what it is called a place for sex why because the brain gets drunk the loud music confuses it the girl are dressed to come and grab me 
And then they blame the world for rapes and blame the things of that. My brothers and my sisters, I don't want to talk about the West and this civilization because that is not my goal here. I want to talk about you. What it is in your life right now that you are naming differently. You're giving it a name different than what it is. Because this naming the alcohol by other names so that people can do them is a law, is a concept applicable to anything that fulfills that criteria. For instance, when you are sitting at home and doing nothing, you tell your friend, I'm killing time. Really? So you've named you being completely useless. You've named where you actually, you and the zero are brothers. Actually, the zero is better than you because it contributes all computers. And you say, I am killing time. You suddenly become the one, the prey, the poor person that is killing time as if time is here to kill you. Well, actually, you're not killing time. You're just proving you're wrong, that you are uh, yourself wrong, and that you are a complete useless person. No successful person on earth knows something called killing time. I give you another thing. I am going to chill down. Chill down doing what? I'm going to watch a movie. And then that chill down becomes every single night. This is no chilling down. This is no relaxation. Sit in, the fr in front of the television for three hours. Subhanallah. I would love, I love just having a nice cup of coffee at the end of the day, put a foot on foot and just chillax and relax and just watch the shows on television. And suddenly you watch television and you go sleep and then you wake up. Allah knows how you wake up for Fajr. But let me, the reality, let me tell you the reality of what it is. What you're telling me is this. I have like three or four hours. I don't know what I am going to do with them, so I'm going to fill them with junk. For the love of Allah, you've been watching television for years. Has your muscles, the body muscles grown, like suddenly you become super lady, superman? Has all the, those hours that you sat in front of the television made you look extremely sexy, attractive to your husband or to your wife? Have all those hours that you sat in front of the television made your brain extremely sharp? Have you memorized Quran? Have you understood the ayat? Have you, have you, have you, have you? The answer is a pure no. It's just a big, huge hole in space that just does to swallow your energy, your time. So actually, every time you sit down for the whole evening, you are doing what? Killing your time. You're wasting your energy. And on the day of Qiyamah, you come to Allah and says, Ya Allah, I apologize. I couldn't learn Arabic. I couldn't learn Islam. I couldn't understand. I didn't have time. How come you don't have time when you are killing time? My dear brothers and sisters, before every single step that you make throughout the day, you want to make sure that you are giving the right name to the right activity. You don't have a girlfriend you have a person you commit zina with. That's what it is. You are not understanding when it comes to the haram. You are a guilty person as the other one, a partner in crime. When you wake up in Fajr and you can't stand praying properly, don't say, I am tired. Tell yourself you didn't go to bed early. Everything, my brothers and my sisters, if you want to be a champion, you start thinking as a champion. You want to start doing that. Look at the champion. Show me a champion that when they have a next day competition, they spend the night drinking, uh, the night drinking coffee, not sleeping, and wasting their time in front of television. They all go to bed early. They all eat nutritional foods. They all do this in preparation for the next day competition. Isn't Fajr a competition, a daily competition for us. To stand up, to pray the two rak'at, the sunnah of Fajr, every single day are better than the entire world. You know what that means? It means when you are in bed, I'm not talking here about the, the fard, the compulsory prayer. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking just about the sunnah, the beforehand. If someone comes to bed and tells you, 
a Muslim, okay, I'm not going to go shaitan and all that kind of, no, I'm talking about if a Muslim comes to you, a rich Muslim, and tells you, look, I will give you a one million for every human on earth, i.e. for the eight billion that we are, you get one million for every human. Eight hundred billion, one million, go on, and you do the math. And don't pray these two rak'at. If you take that money, in the sight of Allah, you are a loser. You didn't make the right choice. Allahu Akbar. This is just for the sunnah. So how about Fajr that you pray in five minutes? Why? Because my brothers and my sisters, we are giving wrong names to things. And this is why our brain is confused. The brain doesn't need eight hours to sleep. It needs only a few hours. You don't need a lot of things. So my brothers and my sisters, the terminologies that you use on a daily basis play a big role in your life. And I, when I speak to people, and maybe you are one of them, I always say, when you say, you know, you know, I start telling you, yes, I know, stop using I know, obviously, uh, sincerely, uh, totally, and all these fillers, they speak about the state of your mind. And let me tell you, I can see a lot of you confused. And I can see through you when you are trying to wing things up. Why? Because I've taught my brain not to take the rubbish, not to use fillers. My life is precious to me. I plan, when I finish this activity of doing my pep talk, I know exactly what I am going to do. And I know exactly what I am going to do when I finish what I am going to do. My day goes as planned. I don't spend my day at the end of the day cursing myself. What have I done? Where did my time go today? You know what happens to me at the end of the day? I look around and I see all these papers I've written and that I've done and this I've done and that I've done. And I go to bed happy. Well, I go to bed happy. I don't feel I've wasted a day in my life. How do I do that? It's by naming things with the right name. Don't fool yourself. Call a spade a spade. And call life, life. And call a failure, a failure. And call success, success. Don't wink things, they will harm you. Your brain believes what you name, what you speak. That's why if you don't speak, the brain does not act. So my brothers and my sisters today, in this pep talk here, stop giving wrong names to situations around you. If you call your child a troublemaker, your child does not know that you are joking, especially in front of people. You say, oh, this kid is a troublemaker. In his brain, he is a troublemaker and it's going to affect him. And in your mind, it's because you think he is a troublemaker, that's why you said it. Don't sugarcoat it later, say, I didn't mean it. It ain't not that thing. Because Allah says in the Quran, وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِيَ يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ Allah says in the Quran, in the meaning of this beautiful ayah, tell my people, the people that I've created, to say that which is the most excellent, i.e. before you utter a word, make sure it's the best quality. When you do this, your life starts making a chance, and it starts making a sense to you. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you come out of the past, of the box of the past, and look at the reality with the glasses called reality, now. Only then that life will start making sense to you, and. Uh, you name things by their names. You are not a miserable failure. You just didn't succeed here. I'll end with this uh, beautiful thought. One day, uh, one of my teachers, his name is Jim Ram. I was in a seminar in uh, Florida, in uh, Orlando, Florida, and he said something beautiful. He said, uh, to a sunset at the end of the day is a beautiful moment you can witness. And depending on what goes in your mind, that's how you look at the sunset. To an artist, they can draw a beautiful, beautiful canvas. They can put like tons of beautiful things. And when you look at it, it triggers so many emotions. And you can look at that painting in the middle of the day, and you can feel the emotions of that sunset. Beautiful. Beautiful. To an imbecile, it's getting dark. It's getting dark. That's the end of it. Because the imbecile is not thinking about what the sun, the sunset, makes them feel. He thinks that what he does. My brothers and my sisters, stop kidding yourself. Name things as they are, and you start making sense of your life, and it becomes a beautiful sunset, not it's getting dark. 
there is a huge difference. I love you all. This is your coach, your brother, name me whatever. But as long as my pep talks are helping you move forward, that is what I want. I want you to be successful. Islam never, ever came to be what it is portrayed today, a religion of blood and killing. This is people, interesting people and clever people distracting Muslims and the world from the real purpose of Islam. Allah says in the Quran, Taha, ma anzalna alayka al-Quran li tashqa. Taha, we have not descended the Quran on you so that you be miserable. Al-Islam is never a religion of misery. If you are miserable, if you are something going through hardship in your own self, ask yourself, don't accuse Islam. Islam came here to make you happy. And tomorrow, I will tell you about how Islam thinks about you as a beautiful human, how it gives you lots of ingredients on how to feel the true love, the true love, the true love, my brothers and my sisters, and when you have a purpose, and when that purpose is of value to you, that's the true love. Think of it. You are single, nobody around. You feel you are not holy. Suddenly somebody comes and brings with them a whole set of different beautiful emotions. And suddenly you start feeling these emotions. And you start feeling that you got a purpose. That purpose is to actually share the love you got. You have somebody towards whom you will gravitate, with whom you will gravitate around this beautiful world. And suddenly the world becomes a beautiful place to be in. What has changed in you? What has changed? It's your perception. It's your perception. So please, 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 to get the right perception, use the right name. Don't say I'm, I'm wearing a mini skirt. Say I'm showing my legs to empty guys to come and chat me up. That's what it is, the end of it. Don't say I'm having a good time having a glass of wine. No, I am messing up with my brain so I can do things that I usually don't do. And the English culture of drinking is a great evidence of that. A lot of people can't have fun without alcohol. Ibn Taymiyyah said, take wine, take fornication, and take music from the life of a non-Muslim, and they will have no life at all. Think of this. Are you one of those guys? I pray to Allah not. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Please, 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 please be a happy person. And be idnillah, look at yourself at what you are going to become in six months' time. Keep listening to these pep talks. I take time in planning them for you. I take time in recording them for you. And I take time in editing them for you. I.e. before posting my pep talk to you, I listen to it at least four times. Four times. And then when I post it to you, I do this. I listen to it as if I, it's not me who done it. And then I take notes from it. And this is how it's impacting my life. My pep talk, you honestly want to listen to it once in the morning and once in the evening. And this way, you will start really embracing life, the hugeness of life. Again, I love you all. This is your coach, your brother, Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. And have a wonderful day. And Allah loves you too. Don't you ever forget that. Wa salli allahumma ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.